Hi again and good morning everyone. A live look at the Denver, Colorado skyline where the trial of James Holmes gets underway this morning. He's the man accused of shooting 12 people dead and injuring 58 others during a midnight screening of the Batman movie The Dark Knight Rises in the nearby city of Aurora in July of 2012. Holmes has pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. If he's found guilty of first degree murder, Holmes could be sentenced to death. Hi again and good morning everyone. I'm Lisa Badeau. Kyle has the morning off. It's now 12 minutes before 7 o'clock and we're starting our non-stop news and weather all the way to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. We start now with breaking news for you. Firefighters made quick work of a fire at a South Fargo apartment building that sent people living there out into the cold for a time early this morning. Alarms went off just after 4.30 a.m. at this building in the 2500 block of 15th Street South. That's just behind the South Fargo Kmart. Fire officials say one family will be displaced because of fire and smoke damage. No one was reported hurt, but firefighters had to rescue a woman's cat. A Minnesota mom is going public with how her son was bullied at school in hopes of putting an end to the bad behavior. She posted a picture on Facebook of the 15-year-old boy tied up and his hoodie pulled tight over his face. Police are investigating the event that happened Friday at Osakis High School just east of Alexandria. My understanding is, is that um, when my son entered the classroom, he was surrounded by these boys and tied up. No other student ha have to go through this or has to feel like um, school isn't a safe place to be. So something needs to change. Tonight, the Fargo Public School District will be talking to parents and answering questions about bullying. The session is free and will be held at 7 p.m. in the library of Centennial Elementary School. A student from Bemidji State University is in a Fargo hospital after being found outside in the cold early Sunday. School officials identify the young woman as Hannah Roshu, a second year student in education. She's being treated at Sanford Health in Fargo, but her family is not releasing her condition. This is the second such case in recent weeks. Just last month, a student from the Twin Cities area died of exposure after falling into a pond while walking home from a party. We're coming up on 651. Time for weather on the ones. Let's check in with meteorologist Robert Hahn. Yeah, we do have some uh, slick conditions out there. That because we've got some fog, some drizzle, some mist, some very light snow. We're starting to see a few snowflakes falling here in the uh, Fargo Moorhead area. Temperature at 32 degrees, 27 over in Jamestown, 31 down in Sisseton. Into these areas where we are seeing that very light drizzle and mist and some light snow as well. That is creating some very slick conditions out there. We'll show you that snow on the radar here in just a moment. 19, your wind chill in Jamestown. 18 up in Devil's Lake. 16 in Grand Forks. Wind chill not going to be much of an issue today with winds remaining light around 5 to 15 miles per hour. There is the snow that will continue to slowly develop and fill in and move across southeastern portions of North Dakota and we'll see anywhere from one to two inches of snow possible along and south of I-94. Better chances for the higher amounts the further south you go into uh, southeastern portions of North Dakota, northeastern South Dakota. Off towards the west, some heavier snow there, snow covered roads as you get west of Bismarck, south of Bismarck. Also some snow covering the roads in our far southern counties in the Dickey, Lamour, Ransom and Sargent counties. And Starting to see that snow develop, and again, we're seeing a few flakes of snow mixing with the uh, drizzle and mist here in Fargo. Some slick conditions in this area from Castleton over towards Valley City, from Jamestown over towards Bismarck. A travel alert is in effect for south central portions of North Dakota. That does include the Jamestown area down towards the Ellendale area. So to give yourself some extra time to reach your destination this morning. There is the snow. Again, it will continue to fill on in as we go through time today. Off to the south, some rain and some snow. Kansas over into Colorado and even down into portions of Oklahoma. For us here in North Dakota and Minnesota and in northeastern South Dakota, we'll see that snow continue to fill in. Again, an inch or two of snow possible along and south of I-94. The higher amounts, the further south you go. Later tonight, another weak system drops on in, giving us a continued chance for some snow showers into tomorrow morning. That may drop another half an inch to perhaps isolated amounts of an inch of snow. And we'll see temperatures tomorrow dropping on off. A cold one by tomorrow evening with temperatures dropping on off into the upper teens in the Northern Valley by tomorrow at 10. And so we head through the next several days. And in fact, the next seven days, we're going to see temperatures above where they should be at this time of year. Today, again, we have more snow. We've already had some slick conditions develop because of the uh, fog, the mist, the drizzle out there. Give yourself some extra time to reach your destination. Not a major storm by any stretch of the imagination, but you will want to give yourself just take care as you head out 
to wherever you're going today. This is the kind of weather that, that gets you in trouble, though, because it is not a big yeah. storm, and it tricks you. You think yep. you can go fast. Exactly. Slow down. Thank yep. you, Robert. Mm -hmm. Now, seven minutes before 7 o'clock, police are looking for the driver who took off after a rollover crash in downtown Fargo yesterday. It happened on Main Avenue and 4th Street right around 3 p.m. A vehicle rolled and ended up on its side. Call Fargo Police if you know anything about the driver of a maroon minivan who left the crash scene. A new bill introduced in the North Dakota legislature could exempt the release of images from police body cameras. It was introduced at the request of West Fargo Police Chief Michael Wrighton, who says there are privacy concerns associated with the use of police body cameras. But when the officer actually carries the camera into your home or into your place of business, there are either privacy concerns for your personal life or it might be a business privacy concern. Brighton says he consulted with the North Dakota Newspaper Association and the North Dakota Broadcasters Association to craft the language of the bill. Construction season is just around the corner, and Fargo is working to prevent any extreme delays like there were last year. Delays on last year's 19th Avenue North project cost businesses thousands of dollars. City engineers say with not offering any incentives on that project and with numerous upcoming projects worth $160 million, that will change. The commission will look into mandating longer hours for construction workers and the costs. Commissioner Dave Pepcorn says recent layoffs in western North Dakota could actually benefit this year's construction season with more workers being available. Tim Mahoney is making it official. He's running for Fargo mayor in the upcoming special election called after the death of Dennis Wallacher, and he could have more company soon. Mahoney says there are many ideas that he's wanted to do as well as build on many of the things currently underway. Former City Commissioner Brad Wimmer has also thrown his name into the hat. And City Commissioner Dave Pepcorn says he'll decide in the next few weeks if he's going to run. A North Dakota mom whose child died while sleeping at daycare is pushing for more training and licensing to make the state's child care facilities safer for babies. A House bill known as Addison's Law would require the Department of Human Services to develop and implement a training program for providers on safe sleep practices for infants. There are some safe sleep practices generally included in training, but the specific SIDS training is not a requirement for annual licensing for providers. So um, Jennifer and I will work that out to figure out how we might need to make a change to this bill. The mother who pushed this legislation was not able to attend the meeting due to the birth of her second daughter just last week. Today, spending a little extra money to eat out will be well worth it at the restaurants, taking part in the Cares for Kids Dine to Donate. The Valley Today's Christy Larson joins us live in downtown Fargo at one of the places helping to give back. Good morning, Christy. Yes, good morning, Lisa. We're at Sweeto Burrito this morning, and they're actually opening in just a few minutes, so you can come already for breakfast and help give back to the community. It's going all to the Children's Miracle Network at Sanford's Children's Hospital. We have Hillary Mork here with us this morning, and I know that you are so involved. You're the director of it, and so let's talk about why people should come out and eat out today. You know, it's kind of a win-win for everybody. You can come out and fill your bellies and help the kids at the same time. It also drives some extra business to our participating restaurants, so it's just really been a great event that we've been doing now for four years, so come out and enjoy a, the great day that we're supposed to have, and um, lots of different restaurants to choose from. Mm -hmm. And I know last year too you guys um, raised nearly $7,000 and that doesn't just stay in the Ephemeria. I mean this is really in the region of North Dakota and Minnesota. Well any child that steps foot into Sanford Children's Hospital honestly benefits from Children's Miracle Network so your dollar really does make a difference and helps kids from again all over the state of North Dakota and Northwestern Minnesota. And why wouldn't you want to give back? I mean, like you said, it's a great way to not only fill up on food, but then you don't have to feel guilty about eating out. <laughs> Absolutely. I, you know, we just had breakfast now, but I'm planning for lunch and dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way to tell your husband or wife at home, be like, you know, honey, I think we need to eat out today and not feel bad about it. Again, Lisa, we have the list up on valleynewslive.com of those restaurants that are participating. And like I said, I might have to buy a few burritos to bring back to you guys this morning as well. That might be a good idea. Christy Larson reporting live for us this morning. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> One of the biggest football games of the year means big business for a Minnesota company. Wincraft in Winona is making hundreds of signs, pennants, and decals in preparation for the big game. They'll also be selling them leading up to and during the Super Bowl. Work started actually last March when they got this year's official Super Bowl logo. 
And now that the playoffs are over and the teams are set, they've pushed their work into overdrive. Wincraft has been making NFL products for more than 45 years. You might still be smelling a bit of Fargo's river cleanup this morning. City crews have been pulling branches and tree trunks out of the Red River and burning them. Getting rid of the timber snags helps prevent problems during flooding, and it also cleans up the green space. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Here's today's question. Men's Health says there, there is a 20% increase in sales of this over Super Bowl weekend. The answer? <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense, doesn't it? Uh -huh. Antacids. All the chicken wings and chips and salsa. Pop, pop, and fizz, fizz. <laughs> oh, what a relief it is. Or maybe it's not even the food. It's just the stress yeah. of, uh, of watching the big game. Depends on who your team is. Uh, a little bit of stress out on the roads today. Yeah, a little bit of stress out there. Some slick conditions out there. As we take a look at some temperatures, Fargo now at 31 degrees. We continue to see some drizzle and some mist. We're already seeing that in many areas. Some freezing drizzle and some mist along with some light snow. Take a look at the uh, radar, and there it is. The light snow that continues to develop over portions of the region. In addition to that, visibilities, we've got that fog, drizzle, and mist out there. And some light snow. Oaks now down to three-quarters of a mile with some snow and some fog in that area. If we can take a look at the road map real quick, a lot of slick conditions out there. All those right. yellows you see out there. Icy. Yeah, icy. Even now, it just popped in just uh, south near the uh, Wapaton area. Some more icy conditions down there with the uh, fog, drizzle, and mist. Temperatures below freezing. Give yourself some extra time to reach your destination. Another look at that radar real quick. And yeah, that'll, that snow will continue to develop as we head through the morning. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. We'll have more local news and weather for you right here in 25 minutes. Have a great day, everyone. Take care.